Hello, my name is David Kramer and I'm the program convener for the Bachelor of Health Science. So welcome to this open day presentation. Um, just so by way of my background, I'm a medical scientist. I did my training in the United States, then moved to Australia, did um, postdocs at the Walter and Liza Hall Institute and University of Sydney, moved on to Deakin University where I led a program in medical science then went into the medical school at Deakin University and then transferred here to ANU 10 years ago where I've been involved in medical education, assessment and admissions, and developed the Bachelor of Health Science, which I'm going to tell you about today. So before starting the presentation, we'd like to begin by acknowledging and celebrating the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. And for the ANU Medical School, we are located in Canberra, and um, therefore we are on Ngunnawal land, but we have many satellite sites that are involved in teaching our medical students that are in lands of different peoples. So these include the, um, the Wiradjuri people, the Nagario people, the Yuan, and the Gundagura people, in addition to the Ngunnawal peoples. So the Bachelor of Health Science, this is an undergraduate program offered by the School of Medicine and Psychology. Um, the School of Medicine and Psychology is a new school at the ANU formed from the merger of medicine and psychology. And there's going to be many new and exciting developments in both the medical program and the Bachelor of Health Science that will arise from this union. Um, <clears throat> we will be talking about the curriculum in the Bachelor of Health Science, but also the pathways that are internal um, to the students in the Bachelor of Health Science to, into, the batch, into the Doctor of Medicine and Surgery, the ANU Masters of Public Health, and various higher degrees by research. The Bachelor of Health Science also provides preparation for further study in allied health programs and other jobs in the health sector, which we'll touch upon. So why would you want to study the Bachelor of Health Science? Well, the Bachelor of Health Science, in addition to having the pathways, is really for students who want to know about how we define health and illness, how we identify and characterize health risks, how do we translate health research into effective health policy, and how do we best communicate and share information to protect health. And then at the end, how do we evaluate all these efforts to promote health? So our program is a three-year program comprised of 12 core courses, four courses from a list of optional courses that you um, select from that list, and then eight elective courses of your choosing from any offering at the ANU. By its nature, our health science program is multidisciplinary. So we provide you with foundation knowledge in medical science and courses that deal with understanding health. So these are courses that address determinants of health, population health, health promotion, and health research. So there's a broad introduction to research methods used across the disciplines that investigate and evaluate health problems, and we provide foundation knowledge and an introduction so that our students and graduates will understand the health system that operates within Australia and throughout the world, and different ways that services and organizations work to promote health. So this is the roadmap for the course in the simplified version. So, and so it's a three-year course after which you graduate. And we have a set of core subjects that we'll talk about in a moment. And what we call these are health and medical science core. And these run through the first two years. And then the health core continues in the third year. In addition to the core subjects, there are the listed electives. So there's one listed elective um, in each semester of year one and year two. And then there's elective slots that are 
you can take advantage of beginning from year one. When we come into year three, there are a number of slots that are open for you to take electives in an area of your choosing. You can study abroad if you would like, and we'll talk about that. Um, there's a capstone course in professional practice. This is a course that addresses employability and understanding your personal preferences in terms of what work might be particularly rewarding for you. So what is our health core curriculum? It starts off with the course that we call health in the 21st century to really have a modern look at studies of the determinants of health and various health issues from a variety of perspectives, which include scientific, social, cultural, and policy perspectives. This then moves into second semester where we have an introduction to research methods in health. And so this is to develop skills to develop what might be answerable research questions and to appreciate and be able to apply fundamental research designs to address health problems and to solve these questions. Then in year two, we have a course called Health Systems and Policy. And this is to develop capacity to think systematically about health systems and policies, the impacts these have on patients. Then Health 2002, Introduction to Global Health, uh, looks at health across the globe, and but using both a theoretical and practical perspectives to evaluate emerging global health challenges. Then in year three, there are three courses in health. The first one is Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health, which allows you to analyze health issues confronting Australian Indigenous peoples. Health Promotion Principles and Practice, which is taught by the um, Center for Science Communication in the College of Science, which gives you practical skills to develop strategies by communicating health issues and health behaviors to various target populations. And then we have Introduction to Population Health, which is taught by the Research School Population Health, which will provide a broad understanding of how the tools of population health are used to improve health and reduce health inequities. So these will be things like epidemiology um, and data science to evaluate health problems, to identify where they're occurring, and then to evaluate health policies and interventions that are put in to see how effective they've been at improving health outcomes. Then we have our, what we call our medical science core curriculum. And this is four units in the first two years. And many students in the program will elect to do additional medical science courses in the third year. But in order to do that, they use their elective study. So it starts off with a course offered by the research school of biology called the human biology course. This is quite an interesting course because it's not pure science in terms of it, it introduces students to the nervous system, circuitry system, digestive endocrine systems, human reproduction, but it also goes into um, some more health related things and looking at diet and exercise on health and disease. Then we have molecular and cellular biology, which is a straight science course introducing the molecules of life, cell membrane, cell structure functions, and cell specializations. Then the medical school offers two courses, which I'm involved in teaching, in the second year called Medical Physiology and Pharmacology and Pathogenesis of Human Disease. So in the Medical Physiology course, we use a systems approach to teach students how organs work to maintain the internal environment and maintain the healthy status of the organism and how organs can work cooperatively, such as in energy metabolism, to regulate the internal environment. We also introduce principles of pharmacology to show how when homeostasis isn't working, how 
targeted drug therapy can help to restore the balance. Then in pathogenesis of human disease, this is a course which is restricted to the Bachelor of Health Science. We go into detailed understanding of how disease arises and how basic mechanisms are put in place through therapies to try to correct disease. And we use a case-based learning model in the tutorials to go through medical information, such as outcomes of clinical tests, to teach the students how to think in a systematic way of putting together various elements, say from a patient's history, their family history, which speaks to their genetic susceptibility, and their signs and symptoms of whatever condition they're presenting with, and to put all those pieces together to come at ideas towards developing a presumptive diagnosis for that patient. And this process, which is referred to as clinical reasoning in medical education, is a, a learned and developed skill set which we are introducing the students to in this second year course. Now, the idea with the medical science curriculum, and the reason why I selected these four subjects in here, is I want students to have an understanding of normal human physiology and functioning as it relates to the healthy human body, but also then insight into the process of disease and pathology and how that causes deviations in normal values that we can measure in the clinical pathology lab. The idea behind this is not to give students a medical curriculum or medical level curriculum, but to give them the vocabulary where they can understand human health and human biology, and also the vocabulary where they can understand disease. And so the idea is we're trying to provide a level of medical terminology literacy with regards to the human body so that our graduates in the health science program, all graduates, even the ones that have just done these four science subjects, will be able to engage with science information in the health sphere, read papers, read review articles, and be able to place that within their um, knowledge base. One of the things that we are very keen about in our program is to develop certain graduate attributes that are not related to the discipline, but are more related to the employability of our graduates. And employability is not just limited to people who will graduate and then go get a, a job somewhere and become a worker. It also is important for anyone who graduates from our program, goes into a re research career, or goes into a clinical career. And teach the students the basic skills for employability, how to write a CV, how to respond to interview questions, how to write a job application. But we also teach them about themselves and we make them explore attributes of themselves by doing certain inventory surveys to understand their what really motivates them and what will reward them. Um, because we want our graduates to go into careers where they feel they are personally suited for and where they get rewards that are rewards that are personal and not just, say, monetary. Or Then there are eight electives that are free and open to students to pursue whatever subjects they want to at the university. And recently, I mapped out what students are do have done in the Bachelor of Health Science with their electives. So we have these listed options here where students can do things such as anthropology, these courses here, a demography course, they can do science communication, sociology, they can do courses that complement our medical science curriculum. If they're in the pathway to medicine, they have to do these three in, in yellow. But they can also do 
a number of psychology subjects within the listed subjects and with the merger of the school of medicine school of psychology we're hoping that the footprint of psychology will be increased. 35% of elective choices tend to be in medical science, 11% in psychology, 10% in anthropology, population health 9%, STEM subjects like maths and physics 7%, languages 6%, science communication 6 sociology 4 criminology 3 and then and so on to these other um, less popular but, but interesting choices that students have made. And there's four pages of lists of the actual different units the students have selected. And so I think it's a great outcome that our students take the electives and really choose what they want to study with them and follow that. Um, it's a very good outcome from my perspective because it helps to broaden um, the individual's understanding of various subjects and to be able to integrate that into their, their view of the world. Something which has been not easy to do the last few years with COVID, but is something that we designed the program to enable to happen, which is study abroad experience. So I am a very strong promoter of study abroad. I think that a break going abroad, getting a global perspective is really fantastic. Study abroad option really gives um, the opportunity to learn in a new culture, experience other people, and have a lot of fun while doing it. So we designed both our pathway to medicine and the Bachelor of Health Science program to be flexible enough for this to be realized by students. And in the first cohort, we had two students go study abroad. In the second cohort, unfortunately, was when COVID came and their third year study abroad experiences were had to be canceled. And so we haven't had students undertaking this, but this is something we want to re-promote as an important part of the, the program. And so it does require advanced planning so that meeting with one of our sub deans in the college to work out a bespoke study sequence is quite important for this. And so it's most straightforward in semester one of year three where students would elect to study the indigenous health core unit in year three in semester one of their second year. This may seem daunting to move a level 3000 subject down to level two, but because students have had the introduction to social determinants in health in the 21st century, introduction to health data, and they're concurrently studying health systems, the indigenous health fits in quite well and they're quite well prepared for it so they can study that and achieve good outcomes in year two. And then this enables four free electives within semester one because students can also move this professional practice course from semester one into semester two because we offer it twice. And then in second semester, students can also do study abroad. This means that they move both the health promotion course and the population health course into semester two of year two into these two slots. And this, again, is something that they're prepared to do. And so this, these two courses are readily accessible to a second year health science student. And this allows them to, do, to go study abroad. There's only one catch in second semester is that if a student is in our pathway to medicine, it, it, the timing isn't right for them to start medicine the following year. And so they, they, they do study abroad in second semester. They'll need to defer for 12 months entry into medicine because we won't have the results from the international university in before they can they would start the medical program and it, actually it's illegal for us to start someone um, who doesn't have their grades completed. That said, there's opportunities to study things such as the Masters of Public Health 
or an honors degree. So we have postgraduate study options, and these are pathway options that directly flow from the program. So the first is the pathway to medicine. So you can study the AME Doctor of Medicine and Surgery, or MCHD. You can do a vertical double degree in what's called a three plus one model. So what a three plus one model is, usually an undergraduate degree is three years and a master's degree is two, giving you five years. But you're allowed to study four subjects from the master's degree in your third year of the program, an undergraduate program, and you also get advanced standing because you've done a cognate course. And this is most popular with the Masters of Public Health. We're introducing it for our medical school, Master of Culture, Health, and Medicine. And there is a university agreement with the University of Canberra should any students want to go into a Master of Secondary Teaching for any student wanting to go into secondary teaching. There's also preparation for honors and PhD studies. The preparation for honors requires students to do some planning. So they need to get advice in an area where they might be interested in. And that advice really is about if there's any prerequisite studies that they need to do in year three in order to get them into a particular specialization which is like a minor sequence of studies that allows them to go into, say, the honors degree in neuroscience, the honors degree in immunology, an honors degree in medical science in um, the research school of biology, or they can simply take the course sequence that they've done through the Bachelor of Health Science and complete the honors program in our school, which is health and medicine honors. Students who have taken enough of psychology through their degree would be eligible to study the psychology and honors, but that will require them to use quite a lot of their electives up um, studying psychology courses. So for the honors and HDR options, the types of research that you can get into as a graduate at the honors level include clinical research. So these would be research that is looking at the success of interventions or how certain practices within a healthcare facility either promotes good outcomes or may be problematic. And so what are called clinical audits are looking at outcomes of patients who have undergone a certain treatment um, clinical trials are experimental trials looking at outcomes. So audits are looking retrospectively. Clinical trials are looking prospectively. For inter new interventions or modifications of protocols to achieve certain outcomes. And then a number of our clinical researchers that are associated with the medical school also do laboratory-based medical science research, and so there's laboratory medicine um, there. So these can be done within the School of Medicine and Psychology, at the Canberra Hospital, or an evolving collaboration we have with the Sydney Adventist Hospital um, in Sydney. Our students can go into honors programs and master's by research programs and eventually higher degree by research programs in population health within the Research School of Population Health, which is a member of our College in Health and Medicine. They can do field-based studies in medical anthropology and population health through our school, the Research School of Population Health and um, Sociologists or Demographers. And then um, laboratory-based projects through the School of Medicine and Psychology, the John Curtin School of Medical Research, or the Research School of Biology. Honors is that fourth year that undergraduates do, which really develops and consolidates their research skills, their critical thinking, and their scientific writing skills. I can tell you that honors is one of the, the best things a student can do when they graduate because it really takes all of the, the learnings that they've had in, that are kind of amorphous in their mind and consolidates and synthesizes them. And they come out at the end of that with very highly developed time management skills 
critical thinking skills from the ability to interpret papers that they read and methods that they read, um, and then scientific communication skills in both written and verbal formats, as well as graphics. So honors is great. The Bachelor of Health Science prepares graduates to go into a wide range of health-related industries. Public service offers a number of graduate programs. These graduate programs require applications in March and April, so generally a third-year student would apply for this. And we're working closely with the people that coordinate the graduate programs and trying to get them in to talk to our students so that they're encouraged to take up some of these opportunities, which um, lead to quite good career outcomes. All right, so most of you who are interested in the Bachelor of Health Science are interested in the pathway to medicine. This pathway offers up to 30 places, of which 30% um, are reserved for students of rural origin. The pathway covers your first two years of study. And this is when all of the foundation core knowledge is delivered in the program. Um, and when I say all of it, I mean the information that you really need as a platform for studying medicine. It has additional study requirements of to a, a first year chemistry across few semesters, biochemistry, and then one other medical science course. And selection is based on the best outcomes from the 14 out of 16 subjects that you study in the first two years. The other components of selection for the pathway to medicine is the medical school interview and an application statement, where a student follows on from the application statement that they made to get into the program and talks about attributes that they have developed during their study at the ANU. So this is what the pre-med pathway looks like in the first year. If you don't have year 12 chemistry, you're asked to do the chemistry bridging course and then do chemistry one and two. You then will do the two health subjects, the two medical science subjects. Um, you have an elective and the recommendation is that if a student hasn't had year 12 physics, that they do the, the basic introductory physics course because understanding of physical properties is quite important to understand some of the driving forces that account for physiological mechanisms. Okay, so let's move on now to some other outcomes. So this is the Masters of Public Health. The Bachelor of Health Science articulates very well with the Masters of Public Health. Um, and the Research School of Population Health has a number of research focuses which evolve according to who joins the school and who leaves the school at any time, but it has a broad base of very successful research programs that are listed here. This is an example of how a student would work with the Masters of Public Health to complete both degrees within four years. And so the idea is you do the, um, the normal sequence of Bachelor of Health Science courses. You take the normal four electives at the beginning. But then in your third year, you use your elective studies to study courses from the MPH. And generally what would happen with this is that this again is something that requires advanced planning, that a student would take the population health course from semester two of year three and take it in this slot here. And so students who are co contemplating this um, pathway are advised to speak to us at the beginning of year two so we can help them plan how best to fit in. And then um, with this pathway, they then double count four subjects. They're counting them as electives in the Bachelor of Health Science and core units in the Masters of Public Health, but they also get an additional semester of credit for a cognate program as an undergraduate student. 
that means they have one year to complete the Masters of Public Health after graduation. And in setting up our pathway to medicine, we've allowed all students who get an offer at their end of their second year to defer entry into medicine for one year to enable them to either do an honors degree or take advantage of this vertical pathway. So how do you get into the Bachelor of Health Science? Well, we use a system that is at the ANU, which is called the um, ATAR Plus system. And this involves um, assessment of your ANU selection rank, which we'll talk about on the next slide, and assessment of a supplementary form that is an opportunity for you to describe your personal development in relation to formative life experiences, challenges you've overcome, and your connection with and contribution to your community. And 80% of offers that we make for the Bachelor of Health Science are made through the ANU Admissions Scholarship and Accommodation Scheme, known as the ASA Scheme, which is, uses predicted ATAR from year 11. So we have roughly 600 applicants. We make 100 offers, and our median ATAR is somewhere in the 96 to 98 range, depending upon the year. Um, for non-rural students, it tends to be slightly higher um, because we understand that students from different backgrounds, particularly more regional centers, often don't achieve the same high ATAR due to the way that ATARs are calculated. They're not a perfect measurement. Um, we have this rural quota that we've already spoken about where 30% of offers are made to applicants from rural background. And we take a broad view about looking at students from underrepresented groups in medicine and health, uh, including those from low SES background, migrants and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, in terms of what we do with interpreting supplementary forms, we look at what someone has done in the context of what, we, what they describe as their opportunities, um, so that it's a very contextualized admission process from the point of view of um, scoring what's in the supplementary form. And we're quite proud that we have students from all over Australia. So the AMU Admission Scholarship and Accommodation Scheme, you have to meet a threshold of activities, which were referred to as co-curricular and service activities. These are not particularly difficult to meet, so that if you've um, been involved in your school in some ways on committees or doing sort of working bees or kind of functions with that. If you have had a job or done volunteering work, if you've been involved in scouts, um, if you've been involved in any sort of creative work, which includes music, theater, dance, um, or critical thinking skills, so that if you have been in tournament of the minds and that sort of thing. And basically you need to meet three of these thresholds of activities. Then we have the ANU selection rank for the ASA, which is based on your predicted ATAR from year 11. And then the bonus points or adjustment factors that are given. Bonus points are given for taking certain subjects and they're listed in the ANU website. And adjustment factors are things that are given for someone who has had a long-standing illness or other event which has impacted upon their study. The system also has in built in it a tier system where additional adjustment factors are given for students who have these characteristics. Um, and then the second tier is bonus points that are given for any student whose academic performance places them in the top 2% of their secondary school campus as nominated by their principal. 
For the Bachelor of Health Science, we have a supplementary form, and these are the questions here. You can view these um, on the website. And really, what we're looking for in selecting students in the Bachelor of Health Science are a number of factors that which are which are equally weighted, but not you don't have to take off every single one. So we're looking for people who have shown engagement as leaders. It could be leadership within the school. It could be leadership outside of school. Say, say someone who is, um, you know, a prefect or um, school captain. Someone who has been in the cadets and has been in charge of um, junior members of the cadets. Um, someone who has been involved in surf lifesaving. Someone who has, you know, risen up in any kind of organization like that. So some leadership things. Participation in groups. We have a lot of people who are members of the social justice committees in their high school, but there's a whole no, whole range of activities that can be. People who participate in sports, debating, theater productions in their high school, music productions in their high school, part of contributions to community, people who have paid work, people who have volunteered work, people who contribute to their religious community and individual excellence. So we have a number of people who are, say, elite swimmers, skiers, sailors, other type sportsmen that, you know, we understand when we're looking at an application from someone like that, they don't have much time to do other stuff. And so we read these, we read what you say about yourself and what you do, and we sort of look at what you've learned from that, from what you've said you've learned from it. It's really about looking at achievement, learning, and professional development relative to the context and the opportunities that you had. So we score these quite broadly um, and really are looking to recruit students who are engaged with themselves and with their community and who, sh through this engagement, show that they have a level of resilience. Um, because success in a competitive environment like this requires some resilience. Um, and certainly, if we're looking at the pathway into medicine, the medical program also requires a level of resilience and leadership, empathy, and um, outgoingness that we're interested in those attributes about the candidates that come into our program. And that's why we have this supplementary form and why in the Pathway for Medicine we follow up on that. Okay, so what gets you into this course? Um, why are we selected in this course? Well, the first thing is that you're a smart cookie. All right, so 96 ATARs and above um, for the median um, you've achieved, you're smart, you've earned to come into a program at the ANU, and we're interested in having capable students come into the program. Uh, you're gifted and talented, so this is about looking at students, app candidates, and recognizing the efforts that's put into certain achievements. You know, the, the routine that a, a swimmer has to do to become competitive or a long distance runner, um, how much work it takes to do a grade eight exam in violin or piano. Um, you know, we recognize all of these different achievements and there's a, a massive tapestry of achievements that are in the students that we select into the program. Oh, some people, you know, may not be all that talented. You know, most of us are, you know, within the normal bell curve, not in the extreme end of talent, but we can do things like volunteer and communicate um, and connect to our communities and that sort of thing. So someone with a history of volunteering is a, looked at equally as someone who is gifted and talented. We look for leadership roles. Um, 
and a number of the people that are selected into our program have held significant leadership roles usually within their high school and we look for motivated people you know who express through their learning and through the writing style that you know they're they desire to get ahead and then you know at the at the end when we put all this together it's this je ne sais quoi attribute that is you can't put your finger on it on what is successful for everyone but for each person collectively what they have shows that they have the right stuff and that's kind of what je ne sais quoi means so um yeah so that's the end of this presentation um, I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can filter them through the um, information for the College of Health and Medicine. The con those contact details will be provided on the, the website where this recording is found. Okay, thank you very much for listening.